This is this is the ghost story, right? Um, okay, so let's let's turn on the laser. Oh, there we go. That's kind of cool. Uh, so uh, let's turn off these lights. Let's um. Oh, there we go. You guys know the command for that? B. Type the B for a black screen. Okay, so, so what's happening here is that the light is striking a couple slits. There's two slits. When the light hits those slits, some of the light goes through one slit, some of the light goes simultaneously through the other slit. Yes? This is something light could do, couldn't it? Yep. Yes. Okay, the light then acts like two lasers, and if we shine two lasers upon the same screen, right, the light will cause an interference pattern. And that's because sometimes this a spot is an even number of wavelengths difference and then it reinforces and makes constructive interference. And at some distances, it's a half wavelength difference and so a brightness, a crest is meeting a trough and it cancels out. And so this is bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark like this. And I think you guys last year did this thing where you, we put a couple of tones on the stereo speaker and you walked around and plugged one ear and, and you heard loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, and you from sound? Yes, this is something that sound and waves do. Okay, now, if electrons can act like particles, and they really can, then you ought to be able to do the same thing with electrons. Actually, before we go on and do that, I want to pull out the Charles Bossy laser. And just see, let's see what the Charles Bossy laser does, okay? Charles I. Bossy. Okay. Ah, uh, do you see it? Do you see that the dots are closer together on that pattern? It's like it's blowing your mind. We've got to turn off the lights, don't we? And it'll totally blow your mind. Okay. You see it? You see the dots are closer? That's because it's a shorter wavelength, yes. It's related to the, yeah. It's like, there we go. Is it hitting me? Yeah. Ah! Okay. I should not be so casual, probably, about the reflection of that laser. Okay. Now, let's hit the space bar. Let's do the same experiment. We're going to do it with electrons, yes? So we, we, to do this with electrons, the electrons all have to be the same wavelength. So what does that mean about the electrons? Same what? Same energy is true. Specifically, right, um, they've got the same velocity, correct? Okay, so we, so we have a we have an electron laser. An electron laser with light, they all have the same wavelength, and that's because it's an, an interference. We've got a standing wave inside the laser that we've pumped up, and so that's why all we have to do is just let some of that stuff go off the end. It's all that same frequency. It's all in phase, which is a very cool thing, yeah? So it's got to be coherent and it's got to be monochromatic for you, you get an interference pattern. So you've got to have laser, you, to, to, to do that with electrons, they all have to be the same speed. And by the way, this is some, Intel is working on this, they're working on like molecule lasers, right? Because this is a way to dope surfaces, right? Is to, is to hit them, the surface with a molecule of a particular energy so that it penetrates the surface at a certain amount, right? You know, so this is, you know, this is all, if you can figure out how to do that, that this is good stuff, right? Say it again. Yeah. This is, this is a, it might pay better than being a school teacher. Anyway, if you send those, those electrons through and you have them hit a couple slits like this, okay, well, an interesting thing starts to happen. Okay? The electrons, if you let enough of them go, eventually you start to see a pattern where a lot of the electrons are hitting not so many, a lot, not so many, a lot. They're interfering with each other. Isn't that a strange thing? And this really happens. Right, electrons is called electron optics. Right, electrons start acting like waves. Okay, now if you if you believe that we can do make images with electron microscopes, this is not such a hard thing to grasp. That it would also do other wave things. Yes, but let's consider how this happens with light. The light we all understand that the light simultaneously goes through both things and interferes. Yes, how the crap do electrons do that? As they approach the slits on mass, do, do they say to each other, "Hey, hey"? Uh, when you go through, um, why don't some of you go this way, but let's not so many of us hit right here. Well, they don't really, they don't actually speak, so, so they can't do that, right? Okay, but something weird's going on. 
And in fact, you can make this interference pattern by sending the electrons through one at a time, separated each by five minutes. Send one, wait five minutes, send another one, wait five minutes. How the crap is it making that pattern? This is kind of a ghost story, isn't it? How on the earth could, la could electrons sent one every five minutes make a pattern like that? But it does, right? Now, to do this, right, and, and I just blithely did this, and in quantum mechanics, there's no problem. I just set up the, um, the wave equation for this. It's very, very simple for, for the electron flying through space at a particular velocity, right? And then this is, the, and I just set up an interference pattern, and I solve for it, and there it is. Yeah? So the Copenhagen interpretation of this, right, is that we deal with the probability. The wave equation for this thing is a, is a probability. And there's this operator called the squared operator. It's not like squaring it, really, right? And that yields the probability. And when you solve it for this, you, you just get that, right? So how do they interfere? Well, they act like a wave, but what kind of wave is it? It's a probability wave. And the probability wave interferes. Do you like that? No, I don't really like that. Can't wrap my mind around this, right? But that's what goes on. If you want to solve, if you want to predict where it's going, that's how you do it. Does that mean that's what's happening? I don't know, right? Einstein, uh, I believe, never, be never went to his grave saying that, that he didn't believe in this idea of prob only probability that we could predict that. But that's what we have. For quantum mechanics, that's it. But we're good at this. We can get this probability exactly. So, so you know, it's, it's kind of a cool thing. Okay. So you'll do this, and, and there are things like they're called operators, which are certain, like sort of like a function that you do to something. It's like an, like an integral is, is sort of like an operator, right? Like pitchfork, right? Okay. So there's another thing, and and, and uh, Einstein didn't like this either. Okay, is, is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, and to sort of wrap your mind around it, um, we're going to try to find an electron, and this is the classic thing that they have in your textbook. Uh, and you have to understand that it's not we're going we're to sort of access the idea by talking about hitting electrons with photons yeah but you have to understand that this is just an inherent property of the universe as far as we know we don't know why this is this might be a good question for your maker but um, and I think you guys did you guys talk about it in chemistry at all? Yes, no? Not so much. I don't remember where I picked it up. But this is the notion the Heisenberg. Yeah. Yeah, Schrodinger of Schrodinger's cat, right? What? Oh yeah, yeah. There it is. Okay. So here's here are two formulas for the the um, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, and we'll look at the momentum one. That the uncertainty, the degree to which we can know the position, and the degree to which we can know momentum, is always going to be larger than h over four pi. This is usually in college, you're going to go h bar over 2 pi. h bar is, um, or h bar over 2, because h bar is h over 2 pi, I believe. Okay? But um, I'll just leave it in the IB. This is what's in the data packets, and, and that's the same thing, right? Okay? But, but here's the notion if we're going to find an electron, uh, let's suppose that we're going to use light, or apparently a cigarette. What is this light source? Looks like the, a cigarette, right, with a filter on it, right? Okay? Um, and, and we're going we're gonna to strike the electron with uh, uh, the photon, and therefore we'll know where it is because we can see that electron as it scatters. This is how I can see you guys, yes? Photons are hitting you. Some of them scatter into my eyes, and I can put that together and figure out where you are, yes? Okay. Now, here's what you must know, okay, is that, that photons, although they hit you and you don't go, ah, whoa, whoa, stop, right? Yeah? It's not like dodgeball for you. For an electron... Getting hit by a photon is kind of like dodgeball. Like like when I played dodgeball, I was always like the target. There was always those big guys that could like make the ball go slam into the wall, like bam, and it would go make a really loud noise. I could barely throw it. I'd be like, ah, right. My little arm 